look at the constraints than what we're doing um, in the first set of constraints here, uh, which are your supply constraints, is we're saying that everything that's coming out of A, so X sub AD plus X sub AE plus X sub AF plus X sub AD, so that's everything that's coming out of A, or going from A to D, A to E, A to F, and H, A to G. Some of that should be lesser than or equal to 50, which is the maximum possible supply. Similarly, uh, everything that's coming out of B and going to D, E, F, and G has to be lesser than or equal to 40. Everything that's coming out of C and going to D, E, F, or G has to be lesser than or equal to 75. So those are your supply constraints. Similarly, for your demand constraints, uh, you work by columns. So everything that's coming into D, so either it's coming from A or B or C, so take the sum of that, and that has to be equal to 50. Everything that's coming into E from A, B, or C has to be equal to 60. Same thing for F, same thing for G. The inflows into F and G have to be equal to 25 or 30. Um, the last set of constraints, like I said, are your non-negativity constraints. Uh, so all of your flows are positive. So X sub I, J is greater than or equal to zero where I uh, is either A or B or C, and J is either D, E, or F, or G. Uh, so those are your supply points, those are your demand points, and what you're saying is all of the flows between the supply and demand points are greater than or equal to zero. Uh, so you cannot have a negative flow uh, in uh, the final solution uh, that you work on from your tool. All right, so with that, we're ready to go into Excel and solve this problem using Excel's solver add-in. Before I show you how to formulate the problem itself, this is what uh, the solution will come out to be. Uh, the overall cost I've already calculated using uh, the solver add-in tool is going to be $720, which again is lesser than the two procedures that we just used um, for the various heuristics. So with the Northwest Corner Rule or the Intuitive Lowest Cost Method, both of them gave us feasible solutions, but they were higher than $720. So $720 after using Excel Solver, you'll know, is the optimum solution uh, or the lowest possible transportation cost that you're going to have. So with that, let's uh, go into Excel and show you how to formulate this problem. Um, so this is the data that I've been given already. Um, and again, this is exactly the transportation grid that I showed you in the slides. So you have three supply points or sources. You have four demand points or sinks. You're given the cost of transportation between the supply and demand points. And you're given the maximum that can be supplied out of A, B, or C. Uh, you're also given the demand requirements for D, E, F, or G. And that's the data that you have. Uh, so the first thing I'm going to do, and this is the simplest way of working with transportation problems, is to replicate that information table that you have uh, from your data into the actual model that you're trying to, to solve. So I'm just going to uh, copy over this table. And this time around, however, I'm not going to have the cost in the cells, I actually want to fill these cells with the flow from A to D, A to E, A to F, A to G, and so on. Um, I'm also going to change the format of these cells because uh, in my data, these cells are a currency. I'm just going to right click uh, and change them into general cells. Uh, and I'll also shape them a little differently. And these are the cells that I want Solver to fill in for me. So Solver will tell me what the values for these cells are. I don't have to fill them out. Uh, also, uh, instead of having the maximum supply and the demand requirements uh, from the various supply points and to the various demand points, I'm going to delete uh, those values. Uh, and instead, what I'm going to have uh, are the total outflows and the total inflows. So what is coming out of the various supply points and what is going into the various demand points. So these are now going to be my outflows. And your outflow is simply the sum of everything that's coming out of A. So once Solver fills these cells for me, I just simply want to add them up. So I'll take the sum of this row, which will give me the outflows from A, 
and I do the exact same thing for uh, the other two cells as well. So for uh, supply point B, I want to take the sum of everything that's coming out of B, and for supply point C, I want to take the sum of everything that's coming out of C. Similarly, at the bottom, at the bottom of every column, I want to have the inflows into D, E, F, and G, which simply means I'm going to take the sum of everything that's going into B. Uh, similarly, everything that's going into E, F, or G. Uh, so everything that is being provided from the various supply points to that specific demand point. So you're taking the sum of column and representing that as your inflow. Uh, the reason we're doing this is because in our constraints, we want to make sure that our outflows are lesser than or equal to the maximum that can be supplied, and our inflows are equal to the demand requirements for those demand points. So this now becomes your model, or uh, what you're trying to uh, uh, solve for. Uh, so let's just pick that uh, and we're basically ready to uh, use solver uh, but before we do so we also need to have an objective function and if you remember the objective function simply is the sum product of your flows and your cost so my total cost then uh, is going to be simply the sum product of your cost grid and your flow grid. And again, remember that flow grid for now is empty. Uh, we want solver to solve this for us. Uh, so this will get filled out eventually. Um, so that is your total cost. Uh, and again, let me just change the format for this and I'll make this into a currency cell. Uh, and that should take care of my objective function. So I have my objective function, which is your total cost. You have your decision variables, which are your flows from various supply points to demand points. You have parameters, which are your costs of transportation. You also have your constraints, which are your outflows being lesser than or equal to the maximum supply, and your inflows being equal to the demand requirements. So with that, we're ready to go into solver and uh, specify our constraints in our objective function. In Excel 2007, you will find the solver tool under data. So go to solver. Uh, the first thing which you have to fill in is your target cell, which is your objective function that you're trying to maximize or minimize. So just select your total cost here. And what we're trying to do with this cell is we're trying to minimize it. So click on minimum or minimize. Uh, the changing cells is where you will define your decision variables or the variables that you're changing. In this case, it's the flows from various supply points to demand points. So just select that matrix or array of cells that you want to change. Uh, and then you add a couple of constraints. So the first set of constraints that we're going to add are that uh, the outflows that you have from points A, B, and C have to be lesser than or equal to the supply that's possible out of A, B, and C. So you add that. And the second constraint that you have are that your inflows into D, E, F, and G are equal to, so you have to change that sign to equal to, uh, the requirements for D, E, F, and G, which is given to you in your data matrix. Uh, so that is your second constraint for your uh, problem. So you click on OK. You have two sets of constraints. You have your changing cells. You have an objective function that you're trying to minimize. Uh, that is the basic information that you need to provide to Solver. Also, you need to go under Options and make sure you check mark uh, the Assume Linear Model and Assume Non-Negative, uh, because this is an example of an LP or Linear Programming uh, solution that we're trying to come up with, and all of our flows should be non-negative. Uh, the other uh, options that are available to you here, don't worry about them. It's beyond the scope of our tutorial for me to explain what these options mean. You can just let the default be and click on OK, and then click on Solve to see what solution you're given. So click on Solve. It solves the problem for you. Uh, you see your total cost is 720. 
Uh, you can either keep the solver solution or you can restore your original values. Uh, you can also look at various types of reports. Uh, the sensitivity report in particular is very useful. Uh, it actually gives you information on if you were to change your parameters around a little bit, uh, what would the total, uh, what would the effect be on your total uh, cost or your objective function? Uh, again, we're not going to choose those reports, but if you wanted to, you could always choose the report uh, if you wanted to. Uh, so I'm just going to click on OK, and this will now uh, save this solution for me. So I have the solution uh, now in my spreadsheet, and I could uh, save the spreadsheet, and next time I open it up, it will have uh, the solver uh, options already filled out for me according to what I've just done. Uh, so that's how Solver works. Uh, it's actually filled out all of our cells for us. Um, and what's being shown to you here is that you're going to supply 25 units from A to D, uh, 25 from A to F, 10 from A B to D, 30 from B to G, uh, 15 and 60 from C to D and C to E. Uh, overall, that would allow you to satisfy all the requirements for the demand points. Um, your total outflows, if you look, are equal to the maximum that could be supplied out. Again, this was a problem where you had balanced supply and demand, so um, you've exhausted all of your supply while satisfying the requirements at the various uh, demand points. So I'm hoping this gives you an idea as to what Solver can do and how you go about solving linear programming problems in general. Uh, so that is a very simple example of a transportation problem. This was, again, extremely simple because our supply and demand were balanced. We did not have to deal with infeasible routes. Uh, but if that were uh, part of your problem, then you need to do something a little different. And that's what I'm going to talk about next, some of the variations that you could have in these transportation problems. Uh, some of these variations are things such as uh, your supply not being equal to demand, uh, or you might have a maximization objective function. Uh, maybe the objective function in a specific scenario might not be about your transportation cost. It might be about the profit that you're making uh, or the revenue that's being generated. Um, and in that case, it might be a maximization uh, objective function. Uh, sometimes the capacities on various routes uh, might have a maximum or a minimum, so you have to take that into account as well. Uh, and like I said, infeasible, unacceptable, or prohibited routes might be another part of the problem as well. So you have to take that variation into account uh, as well. So those are some variations. I'm again going to just talk about a couple of these variations. Uh, and there's an assignment question where you'll have to work with one of these variations as well. Uh, the first variation, and a very common one at that, is that your demand might be greater than your supply. So uh, whatever the capacity is for your very supply points, the demand points have more requirements than that. Uh, there are a couple of ways to resolve this. Uh, the simplest way of resolving this is by adding what's called a dummy node for your supply points, or a dummy origin node. Um, and the dummy origin node can supply the difference between uh, the demand and supply uh, to one of the particular uh, demand points. So any demand point that receives some supply from this dummy node will be the one which will eventually fall short of its total requirements. Um, so that's the concept behind the dummy origin. Uh, the way you incorporate this into your solution is that you assign a zero cost of transportation uh, from this dummy node to every destination node. Uh, so what you're doing is you're not really affecting the overall minimum cost because now you're including cost of zero. Uh, but this problem now becomes solvable because now what we're saying is that any difference that exists between the total supply and total demand can be provided uh, by this dummy node, uh, which does not exist but for uh, purposes of solving this problem using a balanced uh, notation, we could do something like this. Uh, also, another variation which we're going to use, I'll show you an example of this, and you're going to use this in your assignment as well, uh, is a transportation problem in which some shipments actually go to an intermediate node before reaching the destination node. Uh, 